on the agenda. Hi. Hey. Our, welcome. It's April 26th. This is our uh, DEI call. It's good to have you here. Welcome. Uh, if you could add yourself to the agenda, that would be wonderful. And the question for today is, this is based on Armstrong's piano, is what started all of this. <laughs> is whether or not you play an instrument or have played an instrument at any point in your life. Trombone. <laughs> Kevin, you and I can form a brass band. <laughs> I was in a I was in a ska band back in the uh oh, good lord uh, late uh, oh dear lord I didn't want to know late that. 90s early 2000s that you is, still I, have a ska band look to you I was gonna say I could totally picture that 100 percent yes must have a picture <laughs> not That's sure great. I would not sure I would share that if I did <laughs> I'm a huge Mighty Mighty Boss Tones fan so yes <laughs> awesome I like Save Ferris. That's my favorite ska band. <laughs> I am familiar with both of those bands. <laughs> I think I've actually, I think I've seen both of those bands play. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right. I, got, I think piano is the piano, guitar, tam tam. I don't know what a tam tam is. What is that? Anybody know? I don't. I've never heard of a tam tam, but I'm sure it's an instrument. Yeah, this is a, a Put kind it of. Down. Yeah, a local instrument. It goes a lot. I will show you a, a picture of it shortly. Okay. Um, could somebody drop the minutes in the chat? Anita, I know, just showed up. So. All right. Um, so I'm facilitating this week. We don't have a lot on the agenda. Would anybody be interested in facilitating next week? We help each other make agendas, as was the case this week. <laughs> I've got a training class next week, so I'll definitely be missed the week. No problem. Now that I know what time it is. Yeah, now that you know it's at 10 o'clock US Central. I can do it if nobody wants to, but I will. Well, let's. Great. Okay. Um, so the first thing on the the agenda today is the communication transparency metric. I'm hoping that that wasn't an action item for me. No, no, it was um, an action item from last time to clean that metric up. Okay. Look at it. So I did that. Oh, yay. Okay, great. Do you want to have any comments? Um, yeah. So the only changes, I accepted all the changes everybody made, um, but I did also add in, what did I add in? I added in, let me look here. Oh, I moved the filters up and I reworded the way we had the survey. Um, instead of like the uh, the degree to which blah blah i i copied more of like how we did it in the the burnout metric okay just for consistency sake and then um these things right here the number of communication channels all that that was up under implementation with no description so mm -hmm. i kind of felt like it'd be more of like data collection like this is the data that you're trying to co collect so i moved it under here but if you all think it belongs just in its own spot, we can certainly move it back. No, I think that's that's fair. Um, I've been, as you know, like kind of reviewing metrics. I went through common and a lot of what I see often is this section right in here, like in between implementation and filters. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot there, typically. Yeah. It just kind of moves down into these three you know tools tools providing the metric data collection strategies and filters yeah so i think that's consistent okay sometimes there'll be like a sentence here in some of the metrics you know like where like right in that section yeah um but yeah okay was there anything else that was i think that was that was mostly it but if folks want to give it a read um 
we can take out I also added the this metric was last reviewed but um, maybe we take that out I don't know okay um, but yeah and I added a couple of references to so yeah that's pretty much it okay I mean I guess we would update the date last reviewed right because well I have a oh you have updated it so yeah. I have a suggestion on this <clears throat> that we don't include it <laughs> then so we decided to include those in all the metrics some at some point recently like in the last uh, year we did and again as i'm kind of monitoring like going through this i'm kind of doing a full metric audit of things i would say that less than 10 percent contain it mm -hmm. and um it's a little like it reminded me of the um copyright statement that, that we have to update that every year that sort of thing yep exactly but anytime we have like this date thing it's just yeah. something we have to track yeah i think the i think the reason that we had decided to add that date was actually specifically for the the audit that you're doing or not, not the audit that you're doing but the one we did prior yeah so the i think the the reason that only 10 percent have of them is because we only we only made it through 10 percent of the metrics when we reviewed them prior would be my guess my my alternative suggestion and i know that we suggested to add it that doesn't i don't think that should preclude us from potentially not adding it my suggestion would be on the chaos.community metrics page to just have a statement there that says you know chaos metrics are regularly reviewed um, for formatting um, content and whatever else we might want to put in there and the list that we have here you could put the date there if you wanted to yeah last date these were reviewed was that therefore you're not having to put it on every one just a thought mm -hmm. Are we track or do we want to continue tracking that date in the uh like he, uh, in here. yeah in there or in the uh yeah in, in there we could, i'm okay i didn't have a this seems a little easier mm -hmm. to track than all the way you know as a in the markdown yeah i don't have any issue not having it on the, the metrics template i was just pointing out that that's the that was the reason that it was added it was actually it was added to to help with the audits or to uh, to track the audits to some degree. Yep. So. Okay. What do other people think? I like keeping I, it in the spreadsheet. Um, I am indifferent on the metric itself. I, th I think it does signal. Uh, my only comment would be: I think it does signal to someone looking at the metric that it is not just something we put out five years ago and have never looked at again like yeah. it's you know but that's just i mean i don't have strong feelings about that okay uh, i don't have strong feelings either i i do think it's like a freshness date sort of that does attention i mean as, as chaos continues to develop it does help people know how quote unquote old metrics are um it's a kind of accountability but it you know, some of the metrics are just stable and don't need to be reviewed that often. So perhaps that accountability is just a lot of extra work we don't need. <clears throat> to the to the earlier point, we could we could signal that freshness by by making the statement on the <coughs> metrics page as well, just saying that we yeah. we review all of all of the metrics every year or two years or yeah. <laughs> The fear is that it's not on the metric itself because someone might go directly to the metric. Is there any way we could do it include and then pull it from one place for everything? So like we would pull the same date onto that main page, we would pull that same date onto the different metrics. I'm that not sure how we're configured to whether we can do that, yeah. but that's another idea. That'd be a WordPress question. Uh, uh yeah we could uh actually we could do that for wordpress uh fairly fairly easily it would just be uh, a matter of uh creating a uh kind of a new a new module underneath the metric on that page uh and then we could we could pull that review date from the uh 
uh, from from GitHub. Basically, we just have a text file in GitHub that would have the date on it. Uh, but the, the the problem is we have uh, a lot of metrics, uh, and they're not going to share the same review dates, uh, which is why the like in the current in the current form, only ten percent of the metrics have it. That's because it takes a long time to go through and and review metrics. Uh, and uh, and a lot of and a lot of effort, uh, and there aren't that many people that are interested in doing it. Uh, so the so I don't the I don't think they would ever have the same date uh, unless it was just a we reviewed this metric in on such and such date over a thirty day period or something like that. Mm hmm. I mean, the reality is, is every metric is going to get reviewed mm -hmm. in some form, not really content wise, but just structurally, you know? Yeah, I suppose I would vote that we just maybe, we just have that statement uh, where we talk about how we define and release metrics on the website. We just make that statement that says that we review the metrics uh, over a rolling period over two years. Or we, we review all the metrics uh, over a over a two year time period to uh, ensure that they are uh, up to date, uh, and then we just track the dates ourselves, and we we don't uh, the, the uh, and we don't uh, have individual dates stamped on the metrics anymore. So the so if they see the metrics, the uh, the user should be confident that that metric is has been reviewed within two years. What if we said we continually review all metrics on a... Yeah. I think the, what, that uh, continuously reviewing uh, would be more informative than putting a hard term. I understand where Kevin is coming from. He's trying to uh, make uh, the whole metrics platform to have that look. But if I would just give two scenarios, for example, some metrics will change rapidly and some can be informed by other practice that we might need to update without reaching that two years two years could be a long time for some metrics to especially things that deals with diversity and some other metrics that deals with this kind of uh, risk so if we just say continuously i think it will capture a lot more than putting any fixed uh, threshold for solid date on it uh, so I would like to I would like to point out that what I was talking about was a a continuous review. So the metrics can be reviewed multiple times, uh, mm -hmm. any time. That two year date is just to ensure that all of the metrics get reviewed and none of them get uh, kind of ignored, right? So it doesn't doesn't say that we have to review every metric only once over two years. It's just it's more of an assurance that every metric is is reviewed during that time period. So uh, metrics can be reviewed five, six times as needed. They can edit, they can change. Otherwise, just the, that, that two year date is just uh, to assure that no metrics fall through the cracks. Okay, I got it. But I mean, we can still just keep it uh, simple, like that map suggests, it's just my opinion. So, because sometimes when we communicate clearly and we put dates, the way the brain functions, they would want to go with things that are concrete. So if we just say we do it continuously, I mean, then uh, on the metrics release page, we can, where we choose our cadence. And I think we also have the instructions on how the community review period and things like that about something like that that I just put in the chat. Yep, that works for me. Does that work for you, Armstrong? It's just really simple. Yeah, I mean, we can we can keep it there. Uh, what if we have a matrix math? Do we have any... Yes, I think we do have metrics that have not been changed for the past like one year. Yep. Right. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah, then I think that will work. 
We okay. have we have metrics that haven't changed in in four years. Okay. So that are probably yeah. badly in need of uh, edits. <laughs> I mean, I, th I think some of those are just like core metrics. Like I think the commit yeah. stuff. Yeah. Is, you know what a commit is hasn't changed in twenty five years. <laughs> yes. Of course. Well, but like even like it, just then in in terms of like the thing I put in the chat. Like content clarity would it would mostly be a structural change at that point probably. To your point, Sean, like a lot yeah. of that, that won't change. Yeah, but there are right. things that I'm going to see when I'm doing this. Of course, yeah. like it's in the old template. <laughs> we just yeah. need to updated. Yeah. Well, and it's and probably it's always language we can make more clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the the way we define metrics now is a little more mature. Mm -hmm. So the the language is more consistent. Uh, you know, some of those, some of the early metrics that we defined, we were, we uh, uh, were just kind of figuring it out as we went along. So I would yeah. say even some of the, some of the early DEI metrics could use a rewrite. Probably. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. This is super helpful. Um, let's see. I'm going <laughs> to side conversation. Elizabeth, uh, that uh, metric looks good. By the way, I gave it a I gave it a read through. Everything uh, everything looks good. So. Awesome, awesome. I'll, I'll go ahead and publish it then. If nobody has any objection. Uh, the link, Elizabeth, did you publish put the link here? Uh, it's in the minutes, but I can certainly drop it in the chat as well. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, so with the yeah, publish it with the. Where where would this text go? What's the proposal? Just on, I guess, similar to the date. I guess we would replace the date with I that. I think Kevin yeah. said, or maybe you said, um, to put it where we talk about like how we develop the or the release process. So yeah, yeah in that right there. Well, I, I think Amy suggested that maybe having some reference to that in the metrics would help people that just went directly to the metric know that information. Right. So oh yeah, I see. Yeah, that's a good point. To so that's one is point, yeah. put it here, mm -hmm. and one would be like, I think this is what you're saying, Sean. Like to yeah. take this text and put it. Well, I might even. And I thought my point was helping somebody else's point. <laughs> yeah, no, and I, I I thought you made a good one. I mean, it it um because people will do searches and navigate directly to metrics without browsing our website. Yeah. Uh, so, so I will say this: if the if the point of removing that that uh, the review period is to uh, kind of make the metrics page is less uh, uh, less compl complex, uh, then adding adding a block of text is not uh, doesn't really solve that issue. So, and I know that is we we do want the metrics pages to be kind of as, as simple and straightforward as possible. My, if, I mean, if I had to take a preference, mine would be on this page. Just to add that, those two sentences here. It makes sense on that page since that's where people would land to search. I would say re regardless of whether or not we decide to put it on the metrics page, it, yep. I think it definitely belongs on or I'm on the metrics themselves, I think it definitely belongs on that website page. So, and then if we decide to add it to the uh, template, I think that's uh, another discussion. Okay. So maybe Elizabeth, just for this, leave this off, just because um, I think it's something that we could add pretty quickly across the metrics and whether we do it through and includes or whether we just add it directly. I mean, part of me is like, if we're gonna do includes, we probably should put that in the includes as well. Yeah, maybe this is a conversation for common to sort out. Okay. So we could, uh, if we're not adding it to the metrics template itself, we could actually add that content to the uh, to the WordPress page template for the metrics. That would be doable as well. So it wouldn't actually, it wouldn't show up on the markdown. It would just show up on each individual web page. 
What would that? I don't. What would that look like? Um, it would look very similar to what it would look like if it was on the metrics markdown page. It would. It would just. Uh, we just add a module at the bottom of the. Yeah. 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 Uh, I get you. And then, it and then when we and then when we we make a new mm -hmm. metric, you just use you use that template so that yeah. that module would automatically populate. So, well, then that was if we we're going to do that, then my suggestion would be we put that in there too. The the privacy thing. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, Kevin, just a quick point of clarification. We would still need to add that module on every metric page, though, right? Uh, so we can we can make that metric page a template. And then when you go to uh, when you go to make a new metric, all you have to do is select that template. Yeah, I'm talking uh, about like retroactively. Retroactively, we would have to go in for every for every metric that exists now, we would have to go in and, and create that. Okay. Uh, which would take a couple hours, but it's actually fairly at this state. It still is fairly doable. Uh, Does it? And just, we could put that text in in GitHub still, or we could populate it directly to the website. Does it um, just look like? Would it? Would there be like a line, or would it look different from any of this? Uh, no, no, it could just it could just look like it continued on. It would be in between the, the contributors block and it would be before the uh, was it helpful. Okay. Uh, so the that, that bit above is basically a GitHub module. So we just add another GitHub module underneath it. If, okay. if we were pulling if we were pulling this text from GitHub. Uh, and it would just look like a continuation of the page. Oh, well, uh, or unless unless you wanted some differentiation of some sort, no, no, if you want some differentiation, we can put lines, a box, we can okay. make different All colors. Okay. Could it, could it be? Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I really actually, the more we're talking about this, I like that a lot. And I think because when we, like back in the day when we were talking about, oh, we could put these in a database and then, you know, we would just pull the different pieces. But like that is kind of a step towards that where we just have that standard blurb on every metrics page but um right. yeah i really actually like that a lot and this one too reduces redundancy mm -hmm. as well right yeah. so the because all of all of that text all of that messaging is kind of redundant adding it to the uh metrics pages yeah i i i like that a lot yeah that's actually a pretty good idea good um, elizabeth could you try elizabeth. That? yeah yeah i <clears throat> The data collection, you mentioned mostly the qualitative, but whereas uh, Grimo Lab has uh, very professional tools for scrapping other communication channels. I don't know why we omitted those. I, I, I suggest we should include uh, some of the tools, even if we cannot mention all right now, but it's a good thing to use Percival and some of the tools that uh, Grimo Lab have been using. They can they can mine data from Slack, from Twitter, from so many other sources. Do we do we know if there are any visualizations that would uh, fit with uh, this metric? But of course, yeah. In, in as much as we can collect those information, we can visualize them. That's a, a basic principle in data science. No, but I think the question is: Are there any standard visualizations available in Augur or Grimoire Lab that? provide yeah. a communication transparency metric and i'm i don't think there are because i don't think either tool has considered communication transparency as a thing to measure measure to this point but armstrong's right that a data scientist could use data that those tools gather to um at least proxy most of the things that we have here maybe like aggregate yeah well it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to uh show all of communication transparency right if a if you had a, a data visualization that was uh, like checking the activity on multiple communication channels, I would think that would inform uh, uh, communication transparency, right? So the number of communication mm -hmm. channels, the types of communication channels, the number of meetings, the time of events or time of meetings, all of that, all of that stuff that's in the that second box could be visualized in part or is probably being 
So I mean, I, th I, I think, think Augur Grimoire Lab is looking at some of those things. So I think I think what those tools could do is provide a summary of the activity level, but they wouldn't provide a summary that amounts to a review um, to determine if communication channels. You know, there's no it, there's no signal of vetting out or reducing the communication channels or ensuring that others know where to look right. for communication, which I think is the intention of of that block that's highlighted. Yeah, that's fair. Also, if the if there are hidden communication channels, then they just they really wouldn't be found, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Anything so. that's back channel is back channel. Yeah. <laughs> and it's impossible to know if you're not in the community what you know. If all the work's happening in a back channel, that's not you know. By definition, nobody else will know about that except the people in the back channel. Fair. Fair. We want to. Uh, we want to give. Armstrong, do you want to take a pass at this? Maybe we yes, can sure. And look at I mean, it. we'll look at it next DEI. Okay, no problem. Awesome. Thank you, Armstrong. I was just going to ask if you had, you know, links or something uh, direct to find that information. That would be awesome to include here. So. Okay. Yeah, that would be good. Um, Matt stepped away for a sec, but uh, I'm going to um, add an action item back here on the agenda for uh, Armstrong to take a pass um, from Grimoire Lab um, perspective. And then, um, Kevin, how do you want to do this um, module on every page? Um, if you, if, like, if you want to set up the module, I can add it to the pages. Okay. What do you think? Just tell me uh, where it is. I can did, all the, the did all the text we want get pulled into the notes here? That's a good question. I do. Let's yeah. pull it. Maybe pull because it, it was in chat, right? Yeah, it was. Um, here. Copy. Are you putting it in there? Yeah. Because okay. I'm going back um, as part of that metrics audit and just making sure that like everything's linked okay and um, that they're all added to like the all metrics category, you know, just doing a pass on everything just to make sure. So I can just add that at the same time. Not a problem at all. I really like that idea a lot. And then uh, the other bit was adding the disclaimer, the privacy disclaimer thing. What? So do we want to? Uh, so that privacy is that? That's actually it's another doc, isn't it? Somewhere uh, in the repo. So hmm. that that disclaimer did make it to all of the metrics. So if we do add that now, we'll have to go through and take those out. Yeah, take I it out. Keep it all in one pass. You know what I mean? Yeah. So would we? Is the order? Would we? So would we put this? the usage and dissemination first and then the the last bit would be we continually review all metrics i think so yeah is that uh so those star that means uh so that that message currently is bold yeah okay do we want to bold the other bit as well um sure yolo Okay. Do you want do you want this to be done in uh, maybe in the community repo? Yeah, I was I was gonna. Add, do, do you want it to be done in uh, in GitHub or do we want to do it straight in uh, in WordPress? I think in GitHub because then we can change it as you know as we need to or add or whatever we want. And we just had, uh, make that change. We had like once. two pages of uh, <laughs> of notes and uh, yeah <laughs> disclaimers. Right. Wow. But then we can, you know, once we make one change, it'll it'll go throughout. So. Uh, okay. Uh, so. Uh, you think the the community repo or the website repo? Oh, actually, that's a really good point. I would for this. I would say maybe the website repo. Maybe the website, yeah. 
Uh, however, the my, my goal had been to remove as much of the content from the website repo as possible. Yeah. And kind of move it to the community repo or the metrics repos. Uh, so the 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 website repo was try. I was trying to get it down to bare bones, but I think that this this would still belong there even if we were going bare bones. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. Yeah, and wherever wherever you put it, just let me know and then I'll hook it up. Okay. Is this for the include stuff? Yeah. If you get it working, I mean, then I'll, as part of that review, I'll just start removing. <clears throat> True. Okay, yes. Because I was thinking I would do it all at the same time, but yeah, we're going to have to do PRs on all that. Oh, so I would say just good. go ahead and remove. Mm -hmm. So but there's no, yeah, there's no if we get it working, it'll, it'll get working. It'll, okay. Yeah. Well, so then my PRs, I did comment, I did move that statement to the bottom but for the rest of the working groups i'll just remove that statement okay we are okay cool all right so are there other comments on the it sounds like the communication transparency metric is where did that end up um, so Armstrong had a few good points, so he's going to take a look at that metric and add some some okay. stuff from Grimoire Lab. Okay, that sounds good. Um, thank you, Armstrong, for doing that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, should, can I move on? Yeah. Okay. You're good. Um, I did want to just I just drop top drop this in here right now that we're going to have. Um, an effort to improve handbook documentation. This came out of, I think, the community call yesterday. Is that right? And we're going to meet, I, I think, maybe could you put it on the calendar, Elizabeth? It's just. Yeah, know. yeah. And I'm going to send invitations to, to everybody that was, that signed okay. up yesterday. So, yeah. So, 8.30 a.m. U.S. Central. <clears throat> every other Wednesday. Okay. And I think this is just to help the experience for everybody, for not only newcomers, but existing community members, uh, just kind of navigate and get the information in consistent ways um, in our handbook. Does anybody have any comments on that? And this is really kind of from our knowledge base, kind of, I think it's fair to say that it's these seven tiles that we'll be taking a look at. Yeah, and then if there's anything else that's needed that's missing too. Yeah, uh, yeah I wouldn't, so I wouldn't uh, focus on the, uh, the topic areas really uh in the on the website because the the website is just mirroring what's mm -hmm. in the community handbook so think of think of each of these these tiles as a folder in the handbook so the the handbook folders should align with what you see here oh fair yes and then and additionally uh those folders we don't want those folders to go uh to go deeper than the file level so each folder should have all of the files that are needed in it without additional folder structure. Does that make sense? It does. I think the only reason I started here was just because <clears throat> this is usually an easy way for me to start looking at things. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say the looking at it from this this view does kind of highlight the kind of the the problematic folder structure that we that we have, right? So. Yep. Uh, but yes, I understand that that is, let me just go here, is this. 
Correct? Correct. Yep. yep. Okay. So, yep. Okay. Sorting that out so it makes sense here and looks good here. Okay. Yeah, this that view is really good. I like it. It's going to be a bit of work, but it'll, I think it'll help a lot. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Okay. So, um, Elizabeth, I'm guessing this is you, the next one. They're... It is, it is. Just... So this is kind of where we're thinking about for adding in three new metrics to the event badging application. Um, so I just wanted to show that and get feedback from that uh, from this group and also the badging group. So um, yeah, this is just like kind of a staging um, application. Um, and the three new ones are at the bottom. So it's there's event accessibility. So these would be the questions that a person would have to answer. And then uh, event location inclusivity and then public health and safety. And like the, the event accessibility, we're really asking high level stuff. So I don't know if it's enough. Uh, I don't want to overwhelm folks, mm -hmm. but yeah. Like obviously colorblind accessibility is not the only thing that people <laughs> should be should be taking into account. That was just kind of like one question. So maybe we need to reword that to make it a, a little more inclusive. Like there are other ways to make slides more accessible, yeah. you know, with regard mm -hmm. to contrast and font size and all yeah. that. That's important. <laughs> so maybe we should change that. Yeah, so our speakers no. provided guidance about creating slides that are more accessible. To say more accessible, yeah. The same thing with the next one is Public signage page. at the event and the website. Um, Attentive to accessibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, and then I'll change criteria too to make it more. I'm wondering if this right here does the event provide other accessibility accommodations? I'm guessing this question was related to not. I don't so know. The, it, it, no, but what are the other accessibility accommodations? Uh, um, so, for instance, do they provide cited guides on, I see. Like, I you know, just other okay. things in general that they I see. Yeah. are able to provide? Like signage and slide. Yeah, I feel like signage and slides would be maybe the minimum that they okay. could do. And then if they have other things, that's awesome. Gotcha. Okay. And so then... You know, some hey, sorry, Matt, some people also need hearing it. And some uh, events are actually doing some efforts to provide those to people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they they did that yeah. In Dublin, were you there when they gave headphones out? Yeah, those kind of uh, things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know GitHub in in their conference they've they've offered sighted volunteers to help folks okay. that need it. You know, and I think that's really awesome. Also, things like providing the number of steps from point A to point B and things like that. Okay. Right, and then you would? I'll change that criteria too, yeah. And then event location inclusivity. Mostly I'm just asking them about their awareness and okay. how they respond and acknowledge any issues.
Those make sense to me. <clears throat> this these references, would this be the link to the metric? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think in the accessibility one, I also linked to the uh, W3C standards and guidelines also, I believe. No, I did not. Okay, I meant to. <laughs> I wanted to, I didn't. <laughs> I mean, it's linked in the metric, but it's like a double, you know. Okay. Could you, is it possible to make these links new tabs? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to take them away from the, <clears throat> the application. I like, ah. <laughs> Good point. Excellent point. Maybe, and then this, could this, this event commits to event accessibility, this event commits to event location inclusivity. Yeah, yeah, I kind of struggled with that, because okay. if they are holding an event in a non-inclusive place, like, it's like, I, I don't want someone who is affected by these issues to say, well, this event says they commit to it. And yet they're still holding it here. I got you. You know what that's I'm saying? Yep, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. It's like a subtle wording. I don't know. I get it. That makes no, sense. No, that the location one is the hardest because honestly, that's that's in motion like almost daily right now. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't, you know, not everybody has total control over where you know what I mean where they can but it's like if I plan a conference 18 months to two years in advance like right if I'd have done that 18 months to two years ago all my theories about what was you know equitable would be wrong changes yeah yeah For a lot of places yeah <clears throat> okay any other comments on this looks good I like it um Hold on. Okay. Mm -hmm. That also did not open in the new link, did it? <laughs> Or a new tab, I mean. Sorry, <laughs> I will check that. I will fix that. So, I wonder about this question right here. Because, so there is the whole program that is the public health badging program. <laughs> and then is, there is the question against the metric that we have released and they're kind of two different things so i mean they're the same content but the metric is it's like a, a metric that we have from chaos so we're asking people do you attend to these things you know are you, are you thinking about these things correct right. your venue but I think the idea was to not duplicate efforts mm -hmm. because the the stuff that the um, public I health see. badging asks is a lot <laughs> different and they have like different levels of badges and I see I see so like you're, that so I guess I should have looked at the second the second point which is so basically we're saying you have to go get a badge from them and then show us that badge to get yeah, go through that application process yeah Because there are a lot more, um, what's the word I want? Um, a, a lot more fine, uh, like a lot more granular with their okay. application. And it's a lot more detailed than we would want to do on our website. Like they're kind of the, I would say they're like more the authority on what's appropriate to be doing at an event. Okay, so it would be possible in this case for them to say no. Correct. And then they would say, I don't have one. 
but here they would provide a link to like COVID policies if they have them, even though they haven't gone through the yeah the program. Yeah. So we want to encourage folks to do it, but it's also, I, I get that it's a whole other step for them, okay. you know, so I don't want to penalize them. I don't, I don't know. Maybe we don't, I don't know how to work that, but. Oh, no, no, yeah. I get it. I yeah. mean, my question was like, if it's, if we're looking at a percentage of attention to things. Yeah. Um, like we want them to, we want to encourage them to go through that process. Like could, would it be possible to, to do this and then say no? <laughs> sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> yeah, NA, not nah. Yeah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, I don't feel like it. Other links here. And then they would, from a review process, they would still get a good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because they can be attentive to that and not go through that badging process, that extra badging process. I got gotcha. sure. Okay, gotcha. When, when we collect uh, links from website, uh, is it, I'm just wondering, you know, some people, uh, they might be in minority, but they have malicious intention. And that has also been reported in some cases. They submit some kind of links that can expose, uh, so can expose people to different kinds of scams or unwanted content. <clears throat> so I don't know at what level are we collecting or this uh, kind of thing is collecting these links is it on individ at individual levels or yeah so the links will just go in that issue the open issue and then the reviewers are really the only ones that click on the links click click on the links that are provided by the organizer so okay. it would be obvious i think that if an an or you know an event because they should all be like they should all have the domain of the event if they're yeah. we're asking them to point to things on their own website, not any external stuff, but on their own website where information is, and then the reviewer clicks on those links to make sure that that information is in fact there. Okay. Yeah, so, because but it's all in the issue, so it would be pretty obvious, I think, if it was a funky link. What do y'all think? Yeah, because of cybersecurity reasons and other kind of scam malicious content, these kind of things have been reported quite often. That's a great point. Yeah, I mean, we cannot do so much at some point, but it's just good to create awareness. Who is submitting the link and how do we process it? That's a good point. <laughs> also for the project badging stuff, is that mm -hmm. we're, you know, kind of opening that up to mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever people say. And yeah, yeah. we're over time, by the way. Oh, we are. I only mentioned that because I have another meeting. Because we're over time. <laughs> yeah, because we're over time. Yeah, you know. I thought, yeah. <laughs> thank you for bringing that up, Armstrong. Yeah, point well taken. All right. Um, thank you, Elizabeth. I think that looks good. I think the comments were positive yeah. for here. So appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. It's good all to right. have you all here and good to see everybody. All right. Good to see Thanks you. All. Take care. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye bye.